Welcome everyone. As we all know, tutorials are a great way to learn anything. But I know for myself that if I want to really get to know something, I have to create a project that forces me to follow through to a finished result. I was inspired by the 36 Days of Type community project and others like it and wanted to use the same concept in my own training. So the way I hope for this to work is to start off with a letter of the English alphabet as a creative constraint and combine that with some concept that I want to really explore further. In this first one, I wanted to understand the best way to control the look of wind affected plants and to create a rig that would enable me to change the animation as I needed. The kind of rig that made sense to me was one that would control the sway of the branches the ripple of the leaves and the bending of the plant as a whole. So let's see how that worked. Okay, so here we are in Blender 2.83. We have a simple scene. We have a palm plant. We have light. We're in viewport shading mode and we have accept scene lights on. So the first thing we want to do is create vertex groups to help control the swaying motion of these branches. And the way we do that is to go into edit mode. And we need to select uh, individual branches and apply them to vertex groups. Uh, the convenience of this model is that these branches are not connected to each other. So that means I can hover over them and hit L on the keyboard and that will select all the vertices in that branch. Now, there's a lot of branches here and I want to create vertex groups out of two or three branches at a time. So I usually try and select branches that are opposite each other. So in this instance, choose this branch here and I might choose a third here. So I've got these vertices selected. I need to create a group but this group is empty. It needs these vertices to be assigned to that group. So I click this button here. So if I deselect them all, and with this group selected, if I hit select, I can see that they are indeed assigned. So let's uh, select some other branches that are opposite each other. I think on this side here, so I'll just deselect the ones that are here, oh, deselect. Well, it looks like some of these are actually connected and that's fine. Uh, assign. And so now I just want to keep continuing on until I've selected all the vertices in this model and I've, I've assigned them to the various groups. Now, after a while it can get a little bit confusing so sometimes you've got to go back to these groups uh, select select and that now that I have all the groups selected I can see what's not selected yet so we can deselect all of these I might just grab this one here and assign that to its own group and again Select, select, and so on. Okay, next step is we want to add an empty to this plant. Shift A, empty. Now we'll just need a plane axis. Need to shift select the plant, control P, and create a parent. That way, when I move the plant, that empty will go with it. Now, in order to take advantage of all these uh, vertex groups, 
we're going to assign simple deform modifier. Now it defaults to twist, or you want bend in most cases. The vertex group, group one, axis of origin is the empty. Uh, we need to re rename that. Empty sway. And this needs to be around five to begin with. So I've set up one simple deform modifier on one vertex group. But I need eight of these. And the easiest way to do that is to hit copy and all of them will incorporate the same basic parameters. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They all are pointing to the same vertex group. So I need to change that. So we've started off with one, two, three. Now I just like to go through and just make these a little bit more random, a little different from each other. And if I have to later on when I'm testing the rig, I can even change some of these to twist or change the access. But we'll leave that when we're doing a test run. So now we just need to add one more empty for this. We'll add another uh, cube. Okay, we'll just scale that down so it uh, fits the scene a little bit better. So this here is our controller so let's name that correctly and this empty when we rotate that gives us the swaying motion but we don't want to animate this directly because if we've got multiple plants and that's going to be very tedious to animate each individual empty but what we can do is add a constraint and in this case a copy rotation constraint and the target is the controller sway and everything else can be left as it is so now if we hit uh, R on the keyboard twice we can see that the empty that is controlling the motion of the branches is being controlled by this controller sway. The next part of the rig that I want to focus on is the rippling of the leaves uh, in response to a breeze. And the way we do that is to add another modifier, and that is a displace modifier. We need a texture, uh, clouds, I prefer this improved purlin. Now the strength is way too strong, but we're going to be controlling that with another empty later. So we can just put that down at point one at the moment. Now the good thing about this displace modifier is you can use an object to determine the origin of that texture map. But we don't have an object in the scene at the moment, so we need to create that. So we need another empty. Let's use a cone. So that's rotated incorrectly, so we just need to rotate that. Uh, 90 on the X axis. Still too big as well, we'll scale that down. 
something more manageable. Control A, flip the scale so it's back to one. That actually matters because that scale actually affects the texture map. So we'll put that here somewhere. Now we need to label that correctly. This is another controller. Leaves. So we click the palm plant again. So if we go back to our displace modifier, choose object, we can now choose that controller. So we can see that what's actually happening is as we move this controller, the origin point of that texture is also being moved and it is affecting the displacement on the actual model of the plant. And we can come back and fine tune that uh, later. And the way you would do that is by going to the texture map and choosing a size that is more applicable to the scene. But the default seemed pretty good there for the moment, so we'll just leave that as it was. Now, moving this is fine, but we also want to control the strength of the breeze, not just the speed. So if we go back to our modifiers, we can right click and choose uh, add driver. The object that we want to target is the controller leaves. We want it to take into account its Z location. We'll get rid of this here. And that should be active. So I can choose how much that plant is reacting to wind via speed, left to right, and its amplitude up and down. So the next part of the rig that I want to create is the ability to control the bending of the entire plant. So. Let's add another empty, this time a sphere. And we'll just change the scale on that. We'll name this empty bend. And we will parent that to the plant as well. What we need now is another uh, deform modifier. Bend again. The axis of origin is the empty bend. Uh, there's a driver on that that I don't need. We need another controller. So a sphere. Scale that down a little bit. Controller, bend. So what we have now is an empty that is telling this deform modifier what the axis of origin is. But again, we don't want to be controlling this on every single plant. What we want is a master controller that will control the bend of all the plants. So the way we do that is with a driver, add driver, the target object is controller bend and the axis that we want to focus on is uh, 
probably Y rotation. And that's done there. So now when we rotate on Y, we get the plant moving as a whole. So on our rig, we can now lock down the X and the Z. So it makes it easier for us. And the good thing about this is that when we place all our plants and say I change its rotation, when we rotate this driver, It's not following the Y rotation of this controller. It's following the rotation of this empty. So wherever I rotate this is the direction in which the plant is going to rotate. So that's basically the rig done. I'm controlling the rippling of the leaves I'm controlling the sway of each of the branches. And I can control the actual bending of this plant. Now in the animation, I had a lot of these plants in the scene. I split this window here. I assigned that as a viewport and I basically had my rig here where I could control it and I could have this rig sitting wherever I wanted it away from the scene I could set up my scene with all the plants and then down here in the bottom right hand corner I simply had my rig and I could animate them, I could set keyframes, and always have the rig here in my right hand uh, viewport. Okay, so let's just create a simple animation. So what did I learn from this? I learned that the more detailed the rig is, the more realistic the plants will look. The more complexity, the better. That means a vertex group for every branch. It means that two or more rigs combined would be better than just one so that the keyframes aren't the same for everything. I also learned that if you can see that your plants are low poly standing still, then they will look even worse when animated, not better. The animation won't hide the sharp angles in your mesh. The eye will still notice it. So I hope that helped. I know it helped me. If you have any advice or constructive criticism, leave a message below. If there is a better way of doing things, I want to know about it. Check out my Gumroad page. The link is in the description. I'm Martin Staley. Thanks for watching.